Hi guys, I'm Juliana, your automotive woman, and this week I'm behind the wheel of the 2024 Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV and the 2024 Mitsubishi Outlander GT Premium gas model. Before I get into cargo space, towing, fuel, and range efficiency comparisons, I'm gonna cover price performance attack pretty quickly. So make sure you hit that subscribe button because this head to head starts right now. The MSRP price on the Outlander PHEV begins at just over $48,000 Canadian or just over $40,000 US. The gas model Outlander MSRP begins at just over $34,000 Canadian or just over $28,000 US. And both models offer standard seating for up to seven passengers. Yeah, I know, the PHEV model starts well over $10,000 more than the gas-powered Outlander, but don't forget to ask your Mitsubishi brand specialist about EV tax credits. This is the 2024 Mitsubishi Outlander GT Premium gas model. This is equipped with a 2.5 liter four cylinder with a CVT transmission. This is producing 181 horsepower with 181 pound feet of torque. And this is how it looks off the line when in normal mode. Normal mode activated, let's go. Listen to that CBT. This is the 2024 Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. This is equipped with a 2.4 liter four cylinder with a 20 kilowatt hour twin motor battery pack and CVT transmission. This is producing 248 horsepower with 332 pound feet of torque. And this is how it looks off the line when in power mode. Power mode activated. Let's go. Well, it's definitely no Lamborghini, but way better than the gas version. Ask your Mitsubishi specialist about the Mitsubishi Connect app because it provides a host of remote services. Now that aside, you definitely do not have to purchase the top trim Outlanders throughout the lineup to receive a lot of driver assisted technology and connectivity. For example, the mid-level PHEV or gas model Outlander offers as standard super all-wheel control, LED lights with automatic high beam assist, adaptive cruise control with embedded navigation, forward collision migration, lane departure warning, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert with automatic emergency braking. And when you level up to the premium trims, you receive even more. And again, even in the mid-level trims, you receive the 12.3 digital driver cluster, which is customizable, and the larger nine inch touchscreen with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as standard. I'll mention more about rear cabin connectivity when I show you the passenger space, but up front passengers receive Bluetooth, a mobile charge pad with one USB, one USB-C, and one 12 volt port. Other upfront luxury and convenient features include a panoramic sunroof with a package, power seats with heating and a heated steering wheel. On the top trims, you even gain massaging seats, which I can personally add is really nice. Now keep watching because I told you I was quickly gonna cover price performance and tech. Now I'm gonna show you cargo space, towing, and most importantly, cover fuel and range efficiency. And if you didn't do it before, make sure you subscribe. The PHEV model offers 1,500 pounds of towing, whereas the GT Premium Gas model Outlander offers 2,000 pounds of towing, but you have to have the proper tow kits installed. Now, when you purchase the mid-level trims and above, they're gonna be equipped with power lift gates, which are also kick to open and close, so completely hands-free. Just aim down the center, it will open for you. This power lift gate is also adjustable in height, just hold it at your desired level, hold this button, wait for the beeps, and it will automatically set for you. When it comes to overall cargo capacity with the second and third row seats lowered, the PHEV model offers 1,832 liters, whereas the gas model measures 1,822 liters. So essentially, there's only a 10 liter difference, which is not a lot. The biggest difference between the PHEV or the gas model Outlanders is how you lower and adjust the third row seats and head space, which I'll show you shortly. Now take a second to watch how I lower each and adjust the third rows from back here. Thank you. 
Lastly, you can lower the second row seats from back here in both vehicles. A cargo cover is offered in both models. A convenient three-pronged 1500 watt outlet is included in the PHEV. However, the gas model offers a 12 volt port in the trunk area. And standard in all Outlanders is a tire repair kit under the trunk floor. Both of the Outlanders I'm showing you are the top trim, so I receive extra luxury and convenience. For example, there's leather seats throughout, these second row seats are heated, there's sun shades on each side, and there's a small climate panel. But again, these luxury and convenience features are also offered in the mid-level trims. Now, these second row seats slide forwards, backwards, they recline and fold in my preferred 40-20-40 split configuration, allowing for an extra armrest and cup holders when no one is sitting in the middle. Both the PHEV and gas models offer big pockets with multiple storage sections behind the front seats. Side door storage is narrow but long, and both models offer one USB and one USB-C port, but the PHEV model includes an additional three-prong outlet. Without question, the third row seating in the PHEV or gas model Outlanders is really reserved for young kids, and I'm okay with that. If you are an adult and you have to sit back here for whatever reason, well, just use some common sense and push the second row seats forward. The biggest difference between the PHEV and the gas model Outlander is headspace. The gas model offers close to 1.5 inches of extra headspace. Now, regardless of which model you choose to purchase, third row gas will receive one cup holder on each side and a small snack space under the window. If you're looking for connectivity, well, don't forget to look in the trunk. 2024 Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV versus 2024 Mitsubishi Outlander GT Premium gas model efficiency test. So I took both vehicles out for a 100 kilometer or essentially 62 mile test drive. And because this is an efficiency test, I prioritized EV mode in the PHEV and I used eco mode in the GT Premium gas model. And this is what happened. First up was my premium Outlander GT gas model test. Like I mentioned, this was a 100 kilometer or 62 mile test using both urban and highway roads. And I selected eco mode for my test drive because this is an efficiency test, of course. When I concluded my 100 kilometer or 62 mile combined urban and highway test, I averaged 7.8 liters per 100 kilometers or 30 miles per gallon. Next up was my Outlander PHEV range efficiency and charging time test. Like I mentioned, I activated EV priority mode because I wanted to test the EV distance of the Outlander, which Mitsubishi advertises as having up to 61 kilometers or 38 miles in range. And then I wanted to experience the transition from EV mode to gas while in motion. During my urban driving road test, I activated full braking regen by using my paddle shifters. Much to my surprise, I not only was able to achieve the full pure EV range of 61 kilometers or 38 miles as Mitsubishi advertises, but I finished with two kilometers or 1.2 miles of EV range remaining. The switch from EV mode to gas was smooth and Mitsubishi even shares a message on the driver cluster, letting the driver know that EV mode is no longer available. When I completed my combined urban, highway, EV, and gas eco mode test drive of 100 kilometers or 62 miles, I averaged 3.5 liters per 100 kilometers or 67 miles per gallon, which is better than what Mitsubishi advertises. In relation to charging times, Level one using a 120 volt connection took 22.5 hours. Level two public 240 volt connection with a five kilowatt output took 7.5 hours. Level three using a public 100 kilowatt charging tower took 51 minutes to full. FYI, if you'd like to achieve maximum efficiency, Remember to select eco mode because normal mode is the default mode in both vehicles. 
2024 Mitsubishi Outlander final impressions. And if I had to choose between the PHEV and the gas model Outlander, 100% I'm going with the PHEV for more than a few reasons. So number one, long-term fuel savings is gonna be amazing. Then definitely the extra horsepower and torque and HOV lane, baby. You know it, you're gonna save so much time there. And also, I prefer how the third row folds in the PHEV. So those are just some of my reasons for liking them. But between both models, I love how they feel. It's heavier steering, it's solid, I feel safe, right? You're a little bit higher too, it's an SUV of course. Um, that said, be careful with the blind spot. So you do have a blind spot out that C pillar where that window is when the second row seats are set up in the middle portion. Okay, just be aware that that happens in the majority of third row vehicles, but you also have blind spot monitoring. So again, just be aware of that. Noise cabin quality is not the best I've ever experienced, but it's still pretty good, okay? All that aside, guys, you have to look down in the description below. I provide you with so much more information and I provide you with links. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.